In today's lecture, I'm going to talk about deflection of beams and frames. Understanding how beams deflect is extremely important, and it is part of understanding structural behavior. If you understand how structures deflect, the chances are that you're not going to make any mistake, even if you're using computer to analyze structures. And the concepts are really very simple when it comes to deflections. Imagine if you have a ruler in your hand and then if you're holding it on two sides, you are applying a load in the middle. It is going to deflect in the middle. And if the ruler is placed on your fingers, then certainly it is going to rotate at the ends as well. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. Now, today's lecture is all about this deflected shape, how beams and frames, they deflect under application of load and how can we plot the deflection diagrams even without knowing the load values. The majority of computer software will show you the deflected diagram so that whatever loading you have applied, the response of the structure matches with the loading applied. So for example, if you are applying a downward load, your deflection cannot be upward, can it? Certainly not. So if you're applying a downward load, your deflection has to be downward. So in that way, we understand the response of a structure to applied loads. And this is what we term as deflection of uh, beams. And how do we plot this deflected shape? In some books, they call it as elastic curve as well. The learning outcomes of today's lecture will be that at the end of today's lecture, you will be able to sketch the deflected shapes of various beams and frames. When we talk about beams and frames, what is the difference between beams and frames? If I draw this, these two supports over here and middle load is applied, this is a beam. If I have a vertical member as well and supports are fixed and I have horizontal member, beam, another vertical member, this is a frame and this is a beam. Beam is basically a horizontal member subjected to bending and frame can consist of horizontal and vertical members. I'm going to define some terms. Deflection is termed as lateral bending or deviation or turn. If you have a horizontal member, when you apply loading, this is certainly going to bend like this. But if you have vertical member, if you are applying loading over here, a point load, this is a column, it's free at one end and fixed at the other end. Its deflected shape is going to be like this in dotted lines. So the key thing to understand here is that when a structure is subjected to load, it will bend, it will deflect or it will displace. Now, the amount of deflection relative to the size of the structure, it might be really very small. It may not be visible to naked eye, but it deflects. But as long as this is within the deflection limits specified by various design codes, this is fine. Deflection, its magnitude and its direction both depend on various factors. One factor is the geometry, which means shape and flexural rigidity of the member. And secondly, it's flexibility of the material. Normally, deeper beams deflect less. If you have this beam, 100 by 200 millimeter, and you have another beam for which depth is 200, this beam is going to deflect less. And the reason for this, this second beam has got more second moment of area. And the formula for second moment of area is BD cube over 12. So if you have more second moment of area, it is going to deflect less. And that is the reason you would have seen that in case of beams, normally we prefer to have deeper beams, be it reinforced concrete, be it steel. And in case of columns, we try to have square columns. So geometry, flexibility of the materials means that wooden structures are going to deflect more, steel structures are going to deflect less. Thirdly, restraint. Restraint means support conditions. A beam with fixed end conditions will deflect less, but beam with simply supported conditions will deflect more. And it depends on load pattern as well. Magnitude of this deflection can be determined either by experiments, which is quite expensive way of finding out the deflection, or we can find it out by calculation. Approximate shape of a structure's deflected shape or deflected form can be predicted. Now this is to check results. 
The first thing that I want to talk about is effect of supports. First, the support that I will focus on is fully fixed support or built-in support. This is a rigid support. When we have a fixed support, how many reactions can we expect at fixed support? Three reactions. It cannot move up or down. That is your vertical reaction. So vertical movement is prevented by vertical resistance of support. And secondly, it cannot move left or right. This is your horizontal reaction. And thirdly, it cannot rotate at support. These are three reactions. The deflections which are prevented because of these reactions are three deflections. Vertical movement is prevented, horizontal movement is prevented and rotation is prevented if you have a fixed support. On the other hand, if you had a pin support, then what would be prevented? In simple support, we have two reactions. Now it cannot move vertically, it cannot move horizontally left or right, but it can rotate because it does not provide any resistance to bending moment. Now roller support, the beam is free to move horizontally because of these rollers. A beam cannot move vertically. And you can take example of this as a unicycle. In unicycle, you just have one wheel. A bike or motorcycle or cycle, on the other hand, it's got two wheels. Again, it's a kind of unstable structure. On the other hand, if you increase one wheel, it becomes three. It becomes rickshaw or tuk-tuk. People can drive a three-wheeler. On the other hand, if you have a four-wheel car, I mean, it is quite balanced. So the main thing to remember over here, only vertical movement is prevented in roller supports. It is free to move horizontally and it is free to rotate. You can see that there is some kind of angle over here. Okay, I will move on to the second effect, the deflected form or shape of the structure is also affected by magnitude and direction and pattern of the load. Member will deflect under applied load. So if applied load is downwards, member is going to deflect downward. If applied load is upwards, the member is going to deflect upwards. The movement is normally in the direction of the load. This is the same thing as I explained, but consideration must be given to the magnitude and type of loading accurate prediction of the deflected shape is to be derived. Sketching displacements. Now this is very interesting. If you have a one meter beam, the permissible deflection could be only less than three millimeter. Now three millimeter and one meter will not be quite visible. Whenever we are drawing these displacements, we highly exaggerate these displacements so that these are visible. Otherwise, if we draw them to a scale, then certainly you cannot view these deflections. Deflected shape is usually drawn using the original undeflected structure as the origin. The deflection is shown by the amount that the structure deviates from the origin. Now, this is a very good example. On your right hand side, it is a beam which has simple support on left, a roller support at right. And on the left, you have a column which has got a fixed support at the base and it is free at the end. And the red dotted line, it shows deflected form or deflected shape. Load is applied over here. At the ends, you can see that you have this rotation because we have a simple support and a roller support. And we know that simple or roller support can rotate at the ends. On the other hand, the figure on your left, it is a column. It is fixed at the end. Now, when load is applied, no rotation is happening because this is fixed. And then you can see at the end, you have this deflection. So when predicting the deflected shape of a structure, uh, we must ensure that compatibility is maintained. The deflected shape must be compatible with any external constraints and joint movements which are applied to all members. Now, in order to predict the deflected form of any structure, these things must be considered. One is support or boundary conditions. The second is position and magnitude of all applied loads. And thirdly, joint compatibility. In this figure, the ends are fixed at the bottom. There is 90 degree between horizontal and vertical member horizontal and vertical member these are fixed all members remain connected we have a rigid joint so whenever you are applying load at the end it will create this deflected shape that you can see in dotted line but the joint compatibility is maintained because this joint is fixed 
the members will remain connected and for the members to be connected together the joint will maintain its 90 degree now sketch the deflected form of a beam supporting a single vertical load the load p will cause vertical or downward deflection of the beam secondly there is no vertical displacement at support a and b thirdly support b may displace horizontally the reason is that this is a roller support and fourthly the overhang section of the beam to the left of support a and to the right of support b it does not carry any load therefore it will not deflect downwards in fact it will deflect upwards if you are applying load in the middle no vertical deflection permitted at b firstly load will induce vertical deflection in a beam whenever we are applying a point load it will directly deflect over here and it will be a straight line there will be no slope at this point and the second point is no vertical deflection permitted at point a but if the middle is coming down the portion at the end will go like this in inclined way and thirdly the horizontal displacement of b may happen because this is a roller support once you have drawn these three things now simply then you connect these three points so this will be your deflected shape elastic curve okay i, uh, I will continue with this second example which is really very interesting so in this example we have to sketch a deflected shape of a beam that is supporting three vertical point loads now we have to see here that what factors influence the deflected shape of the beam. So firstly, load 2P at each end of the cantilever ends will cause this vertical downward deflection. And this will cause the center of the beam between the supports to deflect upward. So whenever we are applying loading, this is going to deflect the ends down, but also it is going to deflect the middle portion up as well and load P will cause downward displacement at mid span. And there is no vertical displacement of the beam at support A and B because we have uh, simple supports and we have a roller support at B. And support B may displace horizontally because it is a roller support. This load 2P is causing downward displacement. So the load will cause vertical deflection in the beam and the horizontal displacement of b may happen because it is a roller support load 2p is going to cause downward deflection over here because of this downward deflection the middle portion of the beam is going to deflect upwards so when it deflects upwards you will draw these lines over here load p is going to induce vertical deflection in the beam but the amount of loads that we have at left and right overhang portion is 2p it is double than the middle load the outside loads are really very high so that is the reason that this is going to cause upward deflection now we will connect all those points we sketch the deflected shape of a cantilever beam supporting a single vertical point load now in here you can see that the support is fully fixed and the load is applied at the end so the factors that influence the deflected shape are load p at the cantilever end will cause vertical downward deflection there is no vertical or horizontal displacement at the support and there is no rotation at the support because this is a fixed support that's the reason it will not have any vertical or horizontal movement and it will not have any rotation load p is going to cause a vertical deflection here there will be no movement on the left now simply we are going to connect these points and in example six sketch the deflected form of a portal frame supporting a vertical point load and a distributed load left support is fully fixed the right support is a pin support now the factors that influence the deflected shape Load P will cause downward deflection of a beam. UDLW will cause a downward deflection of the beam as well. There is no vertical or horizontal displacement and no rotation because of fixed support. And there is no vertical or horizontal displacement at support B. But rotation can happen because of a pin or a simple support at the right. The internal joints are rigid. So when internal joints are rigid, they will remain at 90 degrees even after deflection the load is going to cause vertically downward deflection which is here and because of fixity you will not have any rotation here and because it's a pin 
it will rotate like this joints at left and right these are fixed we'll draw them like this so that they are 90 we will connect these dots you will be able to see the reflected shape thanks for watching this lecture today click on left side of the screen to watch another video relevant to this lecture click on right screen to watch full playlist on structural mechanics